Hey there, it's Osa B Communications. Welcome back to another review live from Michigan. And um, this is one that I was really not really that interested in at first because I thought this whole story was a bunch of bullshit. The Amityville Horror and it's not real. It was all some scheme by George Lutz to make money because I remember reading something about he was at a party with some guy and he was drunk and he spilled the beans that he did it for money and it was not real. And so I wasn't really that interested in my Amityville Horror but until I saw this at a pawn shop. It was real cheap. And I thought it was brand new. It was a fairly new film. And I like I like stuff about the supernatural. You know, I'm a big fan of that unknown ghost type stuff. Um, I mean, I used to read a lot of books on that when I was a kid. And, and I still find it interesting and fascinating to this day. Uh, I still really enjoy watching reruns or... Not really reruns. They're just uh, recorded episodes of sightings that I got off I offer. So I'm in, in, into that kind of stuff. So I decided, well, why not give it a look one time? And one night I gave it a look, and I was pleasantly surprised by this documentary. I actually liked it. Um, this is a documentary about the Amityville Horror. It, it's mainly it's about the story of the son, uh, Daniel Lutz, who for the first time in 35 years. He recounts his version of the infamous Amityville haunting that terrified his family in 1975. And, of course, his parents' story of the possessed house at Ocean Avenue inspired a best-selling novel and subsequent film series that both captivated and frustrated the public upon its release because after the Lutzes moved out, every single other person that's moved into the Amityville house has never had any instances of haunting or any or any sort of supernatural problems with with you know their house, and so a lot of people are pissed and like upset and like oh you know well this is all a bunch of bullshit because I've never had anything that's happened in the house since I've moved in, and it's gotten to the point where they've even changed the windows of the house. The how the windows aren't the same as they used to be. Those infamous windows that made it look like the house had eyes. The new owners have completely remodeled the place, and don't they don't even have the eye windows anymore. And so, this documentary details the struggle behind growing up as part of a world famous haunting, and shows that Daniel's facts may be others' fiction, but the psychological scars that he carries are all too real. And what made this, made this documentary really good is that it covered both sides of it. You had the people who were believers who believed in the story, and then there were the skeptics. And it didn't just focus on one side of it. It mainly it it focuses mainly on the, on this uh, this uh, Daniel Lutz. And um, honestly, this is this film. The moments when he was recounting what happened to him were the scariest moments that I've seen in the entire franchise. And I've seen almost every single Amityville movie. And when you hear Daniel Lutz recounting, and you, when you just see the pain in his face and the terror and the anguish that is shown by his, by his face and by his mannerisms, you can tell that something happened and something affected him. And when he, he, he starts talking about it, talk about how his bed floated in the air and how some spirit went through him and all this other sort of stuff, it's... And how, you know, the window fell down, smashed on his fingers. And he was, it was all, his fingers were all cut up and smashed. And then he looked back later, like a, a little bit hours later, because his fingers were smashed up by this, by this window. And then a couple hours later, like, they, they weren't smashed up anymore. It was like, my fingers were flattened, like, I could, you know. And, and it was just like, they weren't, the, the injuries weren't really there. They talked about all the flies. I guess they didn't have to deal with flies. Like that was a real thing they dealt with. And but what was also really interesting about it and riveting. I mean, it was definitely gripping to watch him recount his his story of the haunting. And then and, and the way that the film was edited and uh, set up was really well done. I thought the director. Um, well, there's a producer. Eric, Eric Walter did a good job uh, directing this and uh, the editing uh, by Eric Walter also edited it so he did a great job directing and editing this documentary uh, and I also thought the music by Herman Whitcam was actually pretty decent as original music that was composed for the documentary and I like how they used Daniel Lutz's own music for 
for parts of the documentary because he is actually a musician. And you get to see him play guitar, and he's actually a pretty good guitarist. And um, and I also thought the cinematography, what little, what there, what was there by Charlie Anderson was pretty good. So it was a documentary that didn't it didn't have a lifeless feel to it. It did feel like there was life behind it, and there was it was trying to do something with the camera work. It was trying to do something with those tech with the techniques, and um, yeah. But going back to uh, the other really riveting part of this was when Daniel Lutz is talking about his relationship with his father, with his stepfather, uh, George Lutz. George Lutz. And George Lutz is the one that everyone pretty much has heard his story. For, and it's always been him who's the one that was interviewed, maybe his wife, telling about what happened. And with this documentary, you finally get a different point of view. That George Lutz was into the, the cult. Daniel talks about when he went over to visit his 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 home while he was you know while he while George is dating his mom, he went into this room and he saw all these occult books, of witches and witchcraft and spell books and demonic books and all this all kind of stuff. And uh, he also tells the story of how he saw George levitating things in the garage and how George would say that he could he had the power to levitate things, and. And it, it, I don't know if it's real or not because it's you, you know if you don't see it, you're gonna be skeptical. But you could see in, in the in the in the mannerisms and the in the way that that Daniel was acting that there seemed to be some truth behind this, which is pretty eerie. That he's talking about how his stepdad was moving wrenches across the room and stuff, and this is a part of the Amityville story that was not revealed until this documentary, which is another reason why I found it interesting and I actually liked it, is because it talked about this other side of it, which you never really hear. You never heard Daniel's side of the story until this documentary, because the only time you'd ever hear any side of the story is George's side of the story. And here, it kind of, it, it creates this sort of thing, like maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But I, I, part of me does buy the fact that George was in, and actually I do buy it. I, and George is no longer with us. He passed away. And that's why this documentary, this documentary wasn't made until after his death. And because George would sue everybody who would try to say that he was making this up or he wasn't right or so forth and so on. And he wouldn't really let any other side of the story come out other than his own. Which does make you think that he was hiding something. And... When Daniel's talking about how his, his stepdad was into the occult and everything, that really makes me think that's what happened. He was at the Amityville house. This is, He was doing some weird shit. He was uh, doing seances, talking to the dead, doing kind of trying to do witchcraft stuff. And he unleashed some sort of demonic spirit in the, ho in the house. And it had an attachment to him because he's the one that unleashed it. He's the one that released it. So that makes sense that there wasn't any hauntings with anyone else who, who had the house after the Lutzes left. That actually picked, that actually ends up putting in a missing piece of the puzzle. Because everyone's always asking, like, well, why hasn't there been any hauntings or any problems with any of the other residents of the Amityville house after the Lutzes left? Well, this explain this this if this if this is has has some truth to it, some weight to it, it explains that fairly well. That it was George was into the occult. He got into into deep with some something. He probably awakened some deep dark spirits that were already in that house because it was the house. This is soon after the DeFeo murders, where people were actually murdered in that house, and it awakened some sort of demonic spirit that just started terrorizing him and terrorizing his family. And uh, even Daniel talks about, he says that he felt that there was still this energy and this still this spirit, this darkness that was following him even after he left the house. So that ties into the theory that George was into some weird shit. He unleashed something. He didn't know. He didn't know how to get rid of it. it attached itself to him, and of course the house because it was attached to him, and he's the one that let it go. And so it causes just night after night of terror in, in, on, on the house on Ocean Avenue. So, 
if that's the case, that that solves that puts in a lot of missing pieces of the puzzle when it comes to the Amityville case. And um, but you also tell that there was a, there was some problems with this was not a happy family. And from what you'd heard from George, it was fine. But from when you hear from Daniel, Daniel says George is not a family person. He was not a father. He wasn't. He wasn't there for him. He was abusive. He was angry. He was just not a good influence, it seems like, on this family. And it might be just teenage angst. might be something, you know, because Dana was a teenager at the time. It might be just him just angry at, at his stepdad and, and, and so forth. So, and and it do, you do get the, the feeling that Daniel does have some psychological issues. And so... And at the end of the film, they ask him to do a polygraph test, and he refuses. So that kind of gives you a little bit of... It makes you skeptical on his story, whether or not it's true or not. But either way, I still think there's definitely some truth, definitely when it comes to the family issues. Now, when it comes to George Lutch moving things around with his mind, I don't know. And I don't know about that. And when it comes to other things, I you know, about his... Re what he's saying about what happened in the house, I don't know for sure. You know, him refusing to take a polygraph test kind of did make me go, what? Uh, I don't know about this. But, you know, he was going to a psychi psychiatrist and he was getting uh, help from them. And so, well, there was an interview with a psychiatrist saying that a lot of this could be just, he's just, these are memories that are coming back to him from his repre repressed memories from his childhood and they're being kind of uh, in a way expanded upon and, and blown up to ridiculous you know over the top proportions and he's putting all these memories that he's had these feelings he's had for his stepdad and for his mom and he's he's giving them he's kind of making it supernatural putting a supernatural twist on them or something but um, if you're gonna ask me what happened I don't know I wasn't there I wasn't there in the house but I do believe there are there are hauntings, there are things that happen in, in, in this world that are not explainable. And I do believe that just because he didn't take a polygraph test doesn't really totally discount what he said and what he experienced. Because you can tell something did shake this man. Something something happened. I mean, you just look at his mannerisms and the look on his face and the way he's acting. You can tell something happened. Um, Exactly what happened, I don't know. I wasn't there. I wasn't a fly in the wall. I wasn't one of the hundreds of flies in the wall in that house, so I have no idea. Um, the documentary also has, it, it, it uh, catches up with Estelle, Estelle I think, uh, is it her name Estella Warren? I don't know if it's her name is Estella Warren, but it's one of the, the Warren, you know, the Warrens who, Lorraine, Ed and Lorraine. It's uh, Lorraine Warren. I don't know where I got Estella from. Uh, but uh, Lorraine Warren uh, catches up with her, and she shares some uh, religious artifacts, and supposedly like a, a a piece of the original cross that Jesus was crucified on has some of his actual blood on it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't know about that. Kind of called BS on that, but you know, okay, all right. Um, believe what you want to believe, uh, but definitely skeptical on that. I, I believe in more of the ghosts that are going on in the Amityville house than that, but uh, but it, it could be true. But uh, that was interesting to catch up with her and her museum and all that kind of stuff, and because they did, they experienced stuff in that house, and uh, she really did feel like there was a presence there when she visited the house uh, after the the Lutzes had left. And there's also a pretty creepy image that they show a picture of where there's a picture of just the hallway of the house and, and around the stairway is this, this what looks like a face of a little boy just peeking out. So who knows, it could be the spirit of one of the kid, the little the, the children that were murdered by, by Ronald DeFeo in the house or it could be the, whatever spirit that uh, George Lutz had, might have unleashed upon his family and you know, upon himself taking on the form of a little boy who knows but if you've seen that photo it definitely does put a, a sense chills running right down your spine and it makes your hair stand up because you're like that looks that that's a little boy that and and they they had tested that photo and there really wasn't any evidence of tampering so 
yeah. Um, I think there is evidence of supernatural phenomenon out there. You just have to know where to look. And uh, I know people are just naturally skeptical, but until it happens to you, that's probably why you're going to be. But as for my personal experience with stuff like this, I haven't really had that much, but I have had moments where I was living in a house in Oklahoma and my Uncle Tony was living over there and he's had problems with his own, you know, craziness and so forth. And I remember just this feeling of dread and, and I wake up and then out in the middle of the, the night and I just felt like something was watching me and it was just like it felt like it was this this, was this blackness, this black shape was staring down at me and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh so um it <laughs> Anyway, uh, I felt this black shape was looking down at me, and if you're wondering what that was, uh, just my uh, deli del dinner was delivered, so uh, I will eat that pretty soon. But that's my distraction. I'm like smelling curly fries and and barbecue pork sandwich, which is just I need to eat it. That's 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 I don't want to eat it right now because it just smells so good. But anyway, uh, sorry for the distraction there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's hard not to be distracted if if you know have what is I'm looking at right now um but anyway uh so yeah I felt like there was this 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 feeling of dread and this darkness and something looking down at me and scared the shit out of me and I didn't I didn't sleep pretty much the rest of the night now that could be some sort of dark spirit but it could also be an example of sleep paralysis which is another thing phenomenon that a lot of people have experienced which there's a documentary called the nightmare from the, from the makers of that shitty Shining documentary, Room 237 or some shit. I don't remember what the fuck name is. It was a fucking awful documentary. But from the makers of that, but it actually looked pretty interesting. And I, you might see a review from me on that uh, sometime in the future. But, um, yeah, I, I have experienced some stuff. But nothing to the extent of what Daniel's experienced and what others have probably experienced. And uh, feel free to leave in the comments below... Um, any supernatural experiences that you might have had in your life. Um, I'm actually kind of curious about that, actually. Um, but anyway, um, it was, this is a good documentary. Uh, was it perfect? No, not everything's perfect. I mean, there were some moments where I called BS and, you know, so forth. But it was it was pretty short. It was only 89 minutes. It went by really quick. Um and I have to say, out of the Amityville movies, this is definitely one of the better ones. Now, I'd probably say my favorite is still Amityville 2, The Possession. And I, do, I can watch Amityville 3D. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. I do like Amityville 1992, It's About Time, uh, with uh, Stephen Mocked. I do like that one. And um, so there are some watchable Amityville sequels out there. And I do like the original. And I can watch the remake. And this this was right up there, though. I thought this was really interesting. I thought it was fascinating. I, it was, uh, I had... I was had completely no expectations when I put this in and decided to watch it because I remember when this was first being advertised, I was like, oh, bullshit. Yeah, he, he just wants some publicity. He wants to get his name out there. He wants some money. And then after watching this, no, that really is, isn't the case. It's, it was nice to see this, actually, to see the other store, side of the story, to see Daniel's story. So if you're curious to see another side of the Amityville story, other than the side of George and Kathy Lutz, I highly recommend giving this a look, My Amityville Horror, because you're, you'll see Daniel's side of the story, which is completely different from what George and Kathy Lutz have been saying. So, um, yeah, so uh, I thought it was definitely creepy. It was, it was uh, fascinating and interesting, and I, I, I really did enjoy this one. Um, so I do recommend this when it comes to documentaries. I really do. I thought it was very interesting and fascinating and an interesting documentary. And, um, it stuck with me after watching it because I was like, there's something there. I, I really think there was some truth behind what Daniel had to say. But anyway, um, everything else to say about my medieval horror, except it was rated out of five stars. Uh, I really enjoyed it. So, um, as, as a documentary, it's one of the better ones that I've seen. And I didn't really have that many problems with it. Uh, I, I'd, I'd say five. I really did like the movie. I, I really don't have that many issues with the film. I thought it was a very interesting, fascinating documentary. Um, and I had no expectations for this because, like I said, a bunch of other times. I was expecting this to be pretty terrible. 
and, and completely unbelievable, but it, it turned out to be really interesting and, and human. I, it really, there's a lot of human emotions that uh, Daniel was letting out in this documentary. And um, yeah, it was, it was, there, was a, there was this down to earthness about this documentary that was really captivating. It, there, was, there was a lot of believability to this unbelievable story that Daniel was telling. And then there was some skeptical stuff going on there too. But like I said, until you experience that whatever he, if he you know whatever he might have experienced, it's not only natural to be skeptical. But um, I think even the most hardened skeptics can find this uh, documentary interesting. Um, and especially if you really like this type of stuff, this the supernatural, uh, unknown, unexplained. Uh, genre of documentaries and, and that kind of stuff i highly recommend that if you haven't seen it already anyway thank you for watching my review of my amityville horror and i'm gonna go eat my uh dinner and i will see you guys later see ya